Hey friends, welcome back to another video. I feel like I haven't filmed a sit down video in an age. That's because I haven't, because I've been moving and blah, 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 getting our apartment together. This is not the final vibe of our apartment. Um, but I didn't want to film in front of my bookshelves because Tom is soon washing up from a lovely risotto dinner. Let me just tidy this at least. Come on, Hannah. Have some pride in my lovely cushions. Is that better? Uh, also, we've got new hair if you didn't watch the latest vlog. Hi, I'm blonde now. That's the story there. Um, I thought I would film today a bit of a video I haven't made in ages, which I like had one planned for September, didn't film it, life went in the way, and now it's like, there's no point shouting those books out. Well, not no point, but like you'll see me read them. So this is a books on your radar video where I talk about upcoming releases that I'm really, really excited about for the rest of the year actually this is well this is october and november and i don't think i'll do a december one we don't tend to get published books in the genres that i read in december it's normally like big hit authors and like christmas books which is not my vibe but maybe in january i've, I've already started a list of 22 books i'm excited for in 2022 so that's kind of crazy um but anyway without further ado i will get started i'm going in just fiction and non-fiction not chronological order any kind some of these i have proofs of none to show you as they are collecting dust at my mom's house and she's going to bring them to me or by the time you watch this she will be with me and i will be in possession of these which is very exciting but anyway the first book i'm excited for is dog park by sophie Osahen. Um, this is published by Atlantic, one of my favourite publishers here in the UK, and it comes out on the 4th of November. And this does not sound like something you think that I would read. But I'm always up for trying something new. And I feel like this, um, the setting of this book sounds super interesting. So it's translated from the Finnish, I believe. So it came out uh, quite a while ago, I believe. And it's set in... Helsinki and it says that it moves between modern day Finland and the Ukraine in the early period of the post-Soviet independence that Ukraine experienced and it looks at a intersection between east and west mentality and it's a, ostensibly a thriller um so it says that 2016 Olenka sits on a bench wait, watching a family play in a dog park a stranger sits down beside her Olenka is startled she wouldn't she would recognize this woman anywhere after all, Olenka was the one who ruined her life and this woman might be about to, about to do the same to Olenka a fragile moment here they are together looking at their own children looking at their own children being raised by other people oh so ominous love the idea of like um two female characters with ulterior motives Sunny made a really good video recently on the female manipulator and this is kind of giving me that energy like dark underhanded female characters we're not really sure what's going on it says it brings fearless psychological accuracy to this captivating story about a woman unable to ex escape the memory of her child so yeah really excited that one sounds super super gripping it's 400 pages which i mean that's an ask for me guys that's an ask but i'll do it for you atlantic books i will okay up next these are quite rogue i feel like for me but maybe not like i'm um, I was like chatting to the hotties the other day, my first book club for my Patreon got announced for reading Harlem Shuffle and CJ was like, that does not seem like a you book, which I was like, does it? What is a me book? And then I was like thinking back on my books I've enjoyed this year and I do read, I feel like I, I read definitely obviously in the literary fiction genre, but I feel like I dip my toe into plot books or um, translated books or just like books with alternative storylines that aren't like millennial women more often than I think maybe other people notice or something I don't know I feel like I read a lot of depressed women moving um as inspired by my friends but maybe not as many as they read um anyway that's a ramble about book taste I would like you to tell me what you think I read or like what what you think of when you think of my my book taste um maybe that would be interesting okay the next one is harsh timed by mario vargas luisa and it's coming out on the 18th of november well i really had to think about how to say that date whoa so this is a, another piece of um translated fiction i believe so it says the acclaimed or author of the feast of the goat which i haven't read looks at the cold this a satire of the cold war in latin america tracing the path of a military coup in guatemala so i'm very interested in reading about latin america that was one of my goals for 2021 not one i've done very well at i'll tell you that um 
but I'm interested, I've spent time in Guatemala, I've traveled Latin America, I'm super interested in stories coming from that part of the world. This author previously won a Nobel Prize in Literature, so obviously going to assume that they know what they're talking about when it comes to these like huge grandiose stories. Um, it says it's ironic and sensual, provocative and redemptive, a story of international conspiracy and conflicting interest in the time of the Cold War. I mentioned a while ago, it must have been like with a video with Tom, how I was interested in reading about um, different like periods of war history that aren't necessarily referenced that often, like the Cold War, the Cuban Missile Crisis, um, the Balkans, those kinds of um, global events that aren't necessarily part of literature or mainstream history knowledge. So that's why this one is on my list. If anyone's read, particularly any of my followers, Spanish speaking followers, have read The Feast of the Goat and can recommend it, then maybe I'll pick that up as well. It's published by Faber, who in Faber we always trust. So that is Harsh Times. Also really into this cover. Okay, the next one is another piece of translated fic. I don't know why that must be a, a trend in, oh, not a trend, but like, I know we have certain times of the year where um, like the debuts sometimes come out in the spring or the early part of the year and then the summer and the s September is like the big hitters. We had Rooney, we've got Colson Whitehead. And then it seems from this, at least, I've got three pieces of translated fiction. I think there's another one coming up as well that I want to read that come out in November. Who knows? Someone who's more in knows more about publishing than me tell me why this is the woman from uruguay by pedro morale and it's uh translated into english by jennifer croft and this comes out on the 11th of november the 11th of the 11th and i'm really interested in reading this it's an argentinian writer and i spoke to one of my lovely subscribers carmen who said that she recently read it in spanish which is really exciting and she was like, i'm really interested in your conversation you have to say about it so the translator won um, it's, she's a man booker international winning translator which is really cool and it's a story of lovers over the course of a single day I love a, a really tight narrative book if it's going to draw me in it's only 160 pages so super short for a piece of translated fiction I actually do have a proof of this coming to me from England so Lucas is stuck at home all day he's an unemployed writer in his 40s embarking on a day trip from Buenos Aires to Montevideo to pick up $15,000 in cash um this is a small fortune which would be the answer to his problems. His wife spends her days at work and nights out on the town with a lover, perhaps he doesn't know for sure. She stares at the blank he stares at the blank page at home, caring for their son and fantasizing about the one thing that keeps him going. The Uruguayan woman he met at a conference seven months ago and is longing to see on his day trip to Montevideo. I went to Montevideo once, it was very, very strange my experience there. I had loads of weird stuff happen to me. I also got stuck on a nine hour bus with no water and I've never been so thirsty in my life. <laughs> anyway, not important. Um, so it's moving and incredibly impactful in the day in this one single man's life. So yeah, sounds kind of crazy. He's touted as one of Latin American's most beloved writers. So could be a bit of me, I think. Um, let me know again if anyone has read that in Spanish. Another piece of translated fiction. This should just be a video about translated fiction at this point. Think Okay, up next is Lemon, and um, this is written by Kwong Yi Sun, and it's published and it's uh, translated by Janet Hong, and it comes out on the 14th of October. So this is a piece of, from the Korean. So again, it's a psychological thriller, like literary thriller. This has Grace written all over it, and it's giving me vegetarian vibes, maybe, um, although I was disappointed by that book in the end, but I loved it. Um, the setting, similar with Francis Charles, If I Had Your Face, didn't love the book in the end, but loved the setting, um, have been to Korea, love the time I spent in South Korea. Anyway, it's set in 2002. A 19-year-old girl was murdered in a case that became known as the high school beauty murder. Two suspects, one with a rock-solid alibi and the other who had no evidence, and the case went cold. 17 years later, her younger sister is taken over with grief and unable to move on with her life, so ultimately she sets out to find the truth. Um, it says it's a dual timeline set between uh, the perspective of a classmate and two of the um, two classmates and the sister in real time. And it says it's psychological looks at beauty, class, gender and privilege in contemporary Korea. Sounds like a bit of me, guys. Sounds like a bit of me. 192 pages. Absolutely perfect. Love a short book right now. I mean, always, but especially today. Okay, another one which I'm sure maybe lots of UK people are excited about, or maybe this is like a niche, I don't know, where depending where you grew up, like a niche um, 
southern thing in the UK, but it's Keisha the Skep by Jade LB, which is coming out from Murky Books on the 14th of October. So Keisha the Skep was, Keisha the Skep, um, if you're not from the UK and not familiar, don't know if Skep's made it across the pond to America, CJJ, tell me, um, that's like um, a word for like a, a derogatory colloquialism for whore, slag, like those kinds of things. So, um, Keisha the Skep was originally published as a series of like anonymous blog posts on a website and my friends and I grew up like in our teenage years reading it, um, like addicted to reading it, like would literally text each other or email and be like, guys, have you seen? There's a new Skep post out, like, let, and we would like read it on our phones in the common room and it was like such a, I don't know, such a part of my um, adolescent growing up. So basically they've amalgamated all of the stories and sort of tightened the narrative and put it out into a book. So it says, Keisha is a girl from the end, Sharpie feisty and ambitious. She's labeled as the top skep, but she's making it work. When her longtime admirer Ricardo finally wins her over, she has it all, love, power, and a chance of stability, but trauma comes knocking at her door. So it says that in print for the first time, this has lived on the phones and websites of fans for decades. It's a timeless coming of age story, not just a word of mouth sensation, but a British classic in the making. And it says it's got essays that accompany the um, text by people like Candice Carty Williams, Caleb Femi, and um, also other content from the author, like new edits and stuff like that. And I just feel like this is a piece of history when it comes to like, I don't know, online British teenagehood in the early 2010s. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited to read this. I might listen to an audio. I feel like the narration is going to be absolutely brilliant. I definitely don't think this book will be for everyone. I'm already envisioning the morally superior reviews that will come out in um, against JLB's choices and what she wrote about and how she um, spoke about like her character Keisha being a young black British woman growing up in London but um so if you didn't like Queenie then definitely don't pick this up because it's going to be of similar vein if not on steroids so yeah that's maybe a niche recommendation but let me know if any of you guys are Keisha the Skep fans because I'm excited <laughs> okay and then next up is oh this one doesn't really need much introduction but Sarah Moss has a new book out I'm sure you've heard loads of people talk about it I actually didn't end up requesting a proof because I love Sarah Moss books on audio and I will consume this on audio so The Fell is about a um I was gonna say it comes out on the 11th of November so The Fell is about a um, period of seven days where a woman is um, meant to be in lockdown because of coronavirus and she goes out on a walk on an isolated hill and ends up hurting herself and then it's a story sort of about um, you know personal morality personal choice versus community and um, sort of where where we see ourselves as individuals in the place in the pandemic i'm very excited to read this i think i trust um moss to go into a pandemic story with a really light hand like she did in summer water dealing with brexit it was very subtle and just like woven into the narrative very naturally obviously reading about covid is not going to be for everyone it's certainly not for me when it comes to non-fiction i know like sophie over at portal and pages reads like so many medical non-fictions about viruses and vaccines and that's absolutely just not for me um but it's like whatever quells your anxiety like I feel like this would be really interesting and I'm particularly um intrigued to see how Moss deals with the idea of like individual freedom versus community respect and care um and I wonder if she'll reference any of those ideas about clinically vulnerable and the disabled community and those kind of conversations so yeah looking forward to that one but as is everyone no not another just a short story collection today a woman went mad in the supermarket stories by Hilma Walitza um so this is published by Bloomsbury and it comes out on again the 11th of November seems like a big day in publishing because three books coming out <laughs> so this is a collection of stories blurred by Elizabeth Strauss and Lauren Groth that I don't care much for those names but they might mean something to someone else watching um, so it says it looks at the private world of domestic bliss through the lens of Paula and Howie's glorious original or ordinary, not original, marriage from hasty weddings to meddlesome neighbours, ex-wives who won't leave you alone. Contradictions and unexpected detours, daily life with wit, candour and observed eyes. 
So it says it includes stories that were first published in the 1970s with new writing by Willitsa, who's now in her 90s. Um, I've never read any of her, but it says this reintroduces the beloved writer to be embraced by a new generation, which I always think is really interesting. Like now I'm going to spend some time on Wikipedia and find out why, what she wrote before, if she went into sort of like, hide, not hiding, but, um, you know, went off the radar for a while, why that was, always very interested in that. So that is a short story collection that I'm excited for. And the last one is coming out with... Um, coming out with world editions is translated from the German. It's New Year by Julie Zay. So the subtitle is When a Family Holiday Turns Into a Nightmare. So it's set in Lanzarote of all places, quite random. Um, and it says that on New Year's Day, Henning is cycling up a steep hill um, and he struggles against the wind and takes stock of his life. He has a wife, children, but hardly recognises himself. Panic attacks have been pouncing on him like demons. And when he reaches the pass in utter ex exhaustion, a mysterious coincidence unveils a repressed vivid memory plunging him back to a traumatic event that cost him and his sister, almost cost him and his sister his life. Darkly compelling and a story of two small children who in the middle of holiday paradise end up in hell and tell the tale. So it looks like it's going to go back in time. I imagine Lanzarote is a place where he holds a lot of childhood memory and it's going to jog that and we're going to hear about his childhood while he's sitting on top of this hill and looking back on his life and what he made of it in the end. Um, so yeah, I think that sounds kind of brilliant. It's out on the 2nd of November. Did I say it's out with World Editions? Yeah. That has been hot with the Hossies is The Life of the Mind by Christine Smallwood. CJ and Jay both loved this. So this is out with Europa. It's quite random, I think, in the UK. And I also really don't like the cover. It's doing, it's trying to be my rest and relaxation but the girl's dress is really ugly anyway this is out on the 14th of october it's a depressed woman moving um a love child of otesha moshvig and sally rooney you know how much i hate when blurbs do that but here we are so it says it looks at professional aspiration and the illusion of our minds that can set us free from the tyranny of our bodies so she it talks about miscarriage growing older and i guess how life and time are fake Sounds great. Excited. Should have requested a proof for that. I don't know why I did it. Okay, on to non-fiction, which I feel like is what you guys always want me to highlight to you because you say it's harder to find non-fiction that you like. And boy, do I have some good ones for you. The first one is free. Um, the subtitle is Coming of Age at the End of History. I was sent a proof of this ages ago, like I don't know, maybe like May time from one of my um, bookstagram followers who also works in the non-fiction department of Penguin, Alan Lane, where this is published. So this is um, set in Albania, the last Stalinist post. Actually, you probably remember me unwrapping this in a vlog like months ago. Anyway, it's set in Albania, the last Stalinist post, the outpost of Europe. It's set in the 90s, a place of queuing with scarcity and political execution and the secret police. To Leah, this was home. Um, so after the fall of the Berlin Wall, things change overnight, they stop being a uh, sort of police state and they can um, decide what to do. So many people flee to Italy. So she pieces together her life growing up in the 90s in Albania, moving away, um, coming of age, political upheaval, the traces, the limits of progress and the burdens of a past a country will hold. Sounds super interesting. As I mentioned before, really interested in that part of the world. Think it will be really excellent. Gonna dig in soon. And it comes out on the 28th of October. Also kind of mad that I've got the ugly proof cover because this cover is so me. Love it so much. Okay, random one. Here with another curveball. This is my non-fiction curveball. Taste My Life Through Food by Stanley Tucci. <laughs> don't ask just look I love him so much like just as a human being 10 out of 10 for Stanley Sushi love his cocktail videos on Instagram I'm gonna listen to this on audio and devour every minute like I'm gonna go to bed every night listening to Stanley Sushi and it's gonna be absolutely fabulous I'm not taking any further questions at this time sorry if you don't like him okay this is one that's coming out in Canada but I wanted to highlight it because I'm sure it'll be of interest to loads of you guys it's coming out on the 24th well, it's out today when I'm filming this, 21st September. It's cool. This is also a very Mercedes book. Mercedes, if you're watching, I think this is a book for you. Um, Unreconciled Family Truth and Indigenous Resistance. 
So this is um, by Jesse Wendt and it says, a prominent indigenous voice uncovers the lies and myths that affect the relations between white and indigenous people, the power of a, di of a narrative that can emphasize truth over the comfort. So it says it's part memoir and part manifesto, which I always find those really interesting, how they balance the personal and the political sort of thing. Um, and it says he is the child of American father and an indigenous mother and he grew up in Toronto with visits to the reserve. In this book he looks at the differences between the Hollywood portrayals of um, indigenous people and the lived culture through the lens of art, pop culture, personal stories and disarming humour. 10 out of 10, very excited for that, we'll see if Tom wants to go halves on ordering it from abroad where it'll be really expensive. Another one I'm going to shout out that's already been published but and I also have a proof of this and I am really excited to read it. Um, and I'm sad I wasn't, didn't make a video and said time to tell you about it. So I'm just going to tell you about it now. And it's The Transgender Issue and Argument for Justice by Sean Fay. I follow Sean on Instagram for so long. I like, absolutely love the content she puts out. I think she's so smart, so brilliant. Love her interviews, her writing, everything. Super excited to do this. As the title suggests, this is a manifesto polemic on why transgender. The transgender community have become a victim of a culture war and sort of what that means for individuals who are parts of it as well as um, all the different systems that are in play that can impact them whether that's healthcare, schooling, education, prison, emergency services and how they are uh, marginalised by literally everything they ever come across so um, it says, trans liberation is faces, it goes to the root of what society is and what it could be, it offers the possibility of more just free, joyful world for everyone. Yeah, just can't wait to read it, already seen some rave reviews. Another one that comes out at the uh, end of September, so in a few days, Beautiful Country, a memoir of an undocumented childhood. This one I also have a proof of on NetGalley, so reading the first sentence so beautiful hunger was a constant reliable friend she came only second to loneliness in china she was the daughter of professors and in brooklyn her family is illegal so it's a story of wang's experience moving from china to new york and living life as an undocumented immigrant so she was unable to speak english at first and her parents work wherever they can survive she battles hunger and loneliness at school Mother's days labouring in sweatshops and sushi factories and nights scavenging the street for new furniture. A memoir of an unforgettable account of what it means to live under the perpetual threat of deportation. The small joys and sheer determination her family found in order to keep afloat in a new life. Told from her child's perspective in the voice, it's, it is intimate and poignant. Wow, that just sounds phenomenal. Super, super excited to read that one. Okay, and, okay, and the final book is a translated memoir coming out with Dawn Publishing and it's called Things I Didn't Throw Out by Marcin, Marcin Wincher, translated from the Polish. So this says, um, <laughs> so the top line quote is, I was complaining about some dull educational program on the po Politsky radio. My mother said, not everything in life can be turned to a funny, turned into a funny story. I knew it was true, but I still tried. It's an unconventional, funny memoir of everything we look behind, a story of contemporary Poland. Um, her mother was a collector of every ob object, and when she dies, she leaves her apartment intact, so Winchester is left to sort through everything. Here he begins to construct an image of Joanna as a Jewish woman, a mother, and a citizen. As Poland emerges from the Second World War and the material meanness of the communist regime, shortages of every kind shape people in deep and profound ways. What they choose to buy, keep, and hoard tells the story of Poland. It sounds so interesting. I love history through objects and that kind of idea of like objects holding as a symbol, like a holding place for memory and lots of other ideas so it sounds like his mother was a hoarder and um he's now looking through all of the things that made up her life so yeah that sounds really brilliant and i'm excited to get that i'm pretty sure i have a proof of that can't remember okay those are all the books i'm excited for in october and november if you have any you're excited for that i haven't mentioned please leave them down below and if any of these excite you please also tell me that too thank you so much for watching my video i'd love it if you stuck around subscribe like do all of those things and i'll see you in the next one bye